I'm Ernan Roman, president of ERDM, and uh, I'll be speaking tomorrow on customer experience uh, engagement with uh, Paul Murray from uh, Dunkin' Donuts. Today, have the pleasure of introducing uh, Stephen, who is doing some very interesting things in the area of managing click to brick, working through the relationship with third party distribution, with very creative and innovating uh, testing in terms of creative approaches that are working, that are transferable to different properties, different brands. So just briefly read you, Stephen Day, Senior Manager of Program Development at Serta Simmons, responsible for many areas related to development and maintenance of multiple mattress-specific programs, most notably America's Mattress and the Mattress Shop local store networks. And having uh, gone through uh, Stephen's slides, a lot of great insights and testing and, and very important insights on how to run tests, how to measure tests, how to improve uh, throughout the, the learning process. So uh, you're in for a treat. Stephen. All right. Thank you very much. I can't decide if I want to stand over here or over here, so I'll probably end up yeah, pacing a lot. Here. Yeah, so, go ahead. Uh, so thank you again. Uh, I am Stephen Day. I'm with Serta Simmons Bedding Company. Uh, we are, at our core, a mattress manufacturer wholesale. Uh, we sell our products to retailers all across the country. The department that I work in, it, we focus on a network of mattress stores across the country that are called America's Mattress, and I'll give you a little bit of information about them. I have been with the company for 16 years, 14 of which have been with the America's Mattress Network, so um, I've, I've been with it from almost the very beginning. Our network, we have about 175 licensees with about 300 locations across the country. And about half of those locations are freestanding mattress stores, what you would think of when you think of a traditional mattress store. The other half are gallery stores, so it's kind of a store within a store concept. Uh, but the, the important thing to note is we are a licensing organization. So we look a lot like a franchise, but we are not a franchise, which has its pros and cons. So some of the pros of our licensing operation is kind of what we talked about this morning in the keynote speak. We've got a lot of collaboration between our owners. They each have their own specific market that they operate in, so they're not competing with each other. So it's one of those best practices. They can all collaborate and come up with their best practices. So that's been very helpful. Uh, we've also been able to allow them some of the flexibility in their local markets. Um, we can come up with ideas and programs from a national level but if they need to change that based on their local market, they have that flexibility to do so. Now, that is a double-edged sword because that also means that they have some of the ability to take our brand and change the message, which is one of the cons as well. So we also don't have that centralized data that you might see from a traditional retail operation. Uh, they're all independently owned. The only true data that we have is our mattress wholesale numbers. We know what they're buying from us, but we don't know necessarily what they're selling at retail, which is a challenge when it comes to analyzing some of the programs that we put in place. So when we talk about the brand and the marketing, which is what I'm focusing on today, um, what we've seen through the years is a definite inconsistency across the country. And I'll give you some examples. This is a few years ago, what you might see depending on which market you were in. So you can see that not even our logo is the same across the country. Um, they, we provided assets to them. We provided uh, a paid staff person that could create whatever they needed. All they have to do is let us know what they need and we'll make it for them. But it wasn't easy. Those assets were scattered through a, a number of different places. Uh, it's not always easy when you've got the newspaper calling and you've got a 48-hour deadline to um, have somebody design something, so they would do it by themselves. And this is what you get, and that's kind of what you would expect from that. So that was our first challenge a few years ago, and what we ended up doing was creating a, an advertising portal so that everything was in one place. So they can go on, they can, they can get all of the assets, they can basically drag and drop their own print. Uh, they've got modules for TV and radio. So we created one place to get all that. And we found that they started implementing our branded templates much more often than just creating that on their own. So that was a win for us. But then we found that the next challenge came along, which was the internet. Again, going back to 2008, 2009, the internet, people weren't relying on it nearly as much for research like they are today. 
And so it didn't necessarily matter to us that the store in Albuquerque, New Mexico had their own website, the store in Duluth, Minnesota had their own website. They looked totally different, the store experience was different. It didn't matter as much because the likelihood of somebody in Albuquerque ever finding the store in Duluth was pretty slim. So we didn't care too much, but we started noticing 2008, 2009 that people were, were researching more and if you searched for mattress or America's mattress, you could get six or seven different results and you'd look at them and say, are they connected? How are they the same? The prices are different. So we knew we needed to change that. And in 2009, we came out with our, our one website. It's now americasmattress.com. We got rid of all of the other uh, iterations of it that were out there. Each one of our owners can log in. They basically have their own subdirectory of the site. So they can customize what's on the home page. They can customize their product selection, their pricing, all of that, but it's all living under one America's Mattress website. So that was a big win for us back in 2009, 2010. But again, with every, every time you can check something off, something new comes along. And what we found was with the one website, we had a couple of retailers that they were getting phone calls or emails from SEO, SEM companies that said, hey, I can get you thousands of clicks to your website each day. Don't you want to do that? And they'd say, sure, I don't know anything about the internet. Why not? Well, we had a few of those companies do things that Google didn't necessarily care for. And if it was just their one website, eh, that'd be OK. But because what they were doing with their local market was having an impact on all of our locations, because you had the one single website, we quickly realized we needed to rein that in. That, that flexibility had gone too far and we needed to find a partner that could do digital marketing, but still allow for that local flex flexibility. So 2010 came along, 2011, we started looking for a company that we could turn to to provide digital marketing for our network. And we knew we wanted to be able to provide national assets so that we could have a consistent brand across the country, but we also wanted to allow that flexibility at the local level if they didn't want to implement what we wanted them to implement at the, at the national level. So in that process, we came, uh, we did discover through uh, um, We Are Serta Simmons Betting, Serta was working with NetServe, who's one of the sponsors of the, of, uh, the conference. Um, and based on that recommendation, we started using them for our America's Mattress stores. And so it started as just uh, basically search and display, but over the years, we've added to the portfolio that again, we brand all of these at the national level and the, we've made it as easy as possible so that at the local level, they can just sign up, they can localize it based on their zip codes and they're using our assets customized for their local level. The other great thing about uh, having a, that national partner is we're able to look at the country as a whole and the performance as a whole instead of just looking at individual markets. So we can take all the data and uh, combine it all and see how our different campaigns, our different themes are performing um, and making changes as necessary. So we had one that's, a, we call it an all size event and it's kind of confusing and uh, we found that people weren't using it in their local markets the way that we thought that they would. So next year, we won't include that in our lineup. That's information we never had before because we didn't know what the local markets were doing. So this has been very helpful to us. And the results have shown it. Uh, so when you look at our current uh, website performance, we have about 28% of the 175, uh, I'm sorry, of the approximately 300 stores that are using uh, NetSerta for their uh, digital marketing. But they are driving over just over a third of the website traffic. So it's not proportionate to the number that, are, that have adopted it. So we see that digital marketing is an important part of our website traffic. And then in terms of sales, again, remembering that this is wholesale because we don't have the retail. Last year, the stores that were incorporating digital marketing into their uh, portfolio uh, were performed 4% better than the non-digital partners. And year to date, they're almost 12% higher. So digital is becoming more and more important. And really my job uh, is to take this information back to the people that aren't including digital in their marketing and let them see that the, the numbers speak for themselves and they should be incorporating that. 
So what are the takeaways for you? So I, I have to admit, when they asked me to uh, participate today, I, I come to this conference so I can learn. And I'm thinking, what, what am I? We, we're a bunch of mattress stores. We're kind of Stone Age. What can I present to you that you can walk away with? You're, uh, some of you might have licensing organizations, but most likely you've got a corporate structure. So what are some things that I've experienced that maybe you can take home? So the first is that traditional brick and mortar retail isn't dead. And whoa, what am I doing? Well, I was doing the black screen. Uh, so you, you will, you'll hear this in the mattress industry in the last two years, there have been some new to the industry mattress companies, uh, Casper, Tuft & Needle, that have gone from zero market share to six to 8% market share in really two or three years, which is pretty incredible. And when you talk to retailers, the old school retailers that focus on the baby boomers and the uh, Gen X, they think, oh my gosh, nobody's gonna buy a mattress in store anymore. But our message to them is the same. It's not that the brick and mortar is dead, it's that now people are relying on both the internet and the brick and mortar to make their purchase, especially when it's a large ticket item like a mattress. You know, when you're spending over $1,000, people still wanna touch and feel uh, that product. So that's one thing that we have learned and that we're continually talking to our uh, store owners about. The other is that we have found that multi-channel marketing still works better than single. And this is both within the digital realm. So I said that we, we used to focus mostly on uh, search campaigns and display, but now we're incorporating video and social. And we found that those campaigns perform better than just a single. But even broader than that, those dealers that are uh, incorporating both digital and their traditional, whether it be radio or print, that they're performing even better than just if it was all digital or all traditional. So we still, the, the goal is to be in front of the possible customer wherever they are, and that might not be digital. Um, it might be print. Uh, so that's one thing that we've learned. And the other thing, and this is, I've, I've, I've made these slides a week or two ago, but I've experienced this just yesterday with the store tours, is that even though I've got a national brand that I wish all of my stores would use and implement, that that localization is very important. Um, we learned that uh, yesterday at the, uh, both Williams-Sonoma and uh, uh, Jackrabbit. Uh, they have national campaigns, but then they've got the stores that are able to promote local events and, and uh, local sponsorships and charities. And I think that that, when you're talking about customers that are going to be loyal to your store or your brand, I think that that is the key. That localization is so important. And we've done that with our stores by having a national brand and coming up with ways that they can use them, but then localize and customize them for whatever it is that they feel is more important in their market. So those are my takeaways for you. I hope that that was, I hope that you got at least a note or two that you can go back and say, well, this is interesting. I can apply this to my business. So. Thank you, it's great. Yeah. Thank you. So at this point, what we wanted to do was use the remaining time for you in terms of questions that you folks have points of discussion, questions, clarification. Uh, who, who wants to start? Yes. All right. Yes, so I, we were, I was actually having a discussion at lunch about this, and it's, there's two sides to it. So you've got these online retailers that um, the traditional retailers are all freaked out about. And it's unfortunate because what the traditional retailers don't understand that it's not the product, that it's not the fact that this mattress is rolled up and comes in a box, it's everything else that surrounds it. So it's, it's the marketing, it's the, uh, and the keynote today was great. I was jotting down all these notes because it's, it's really, it's the, the fact that they have uh, less policies in place. It's easy to return. It's easy, you don't have to worry about scheduling a time and deliver. It's the flexibility. So it's all these things. It's really, it's the marketing and it's that message and it's not the product. And meanwhile, you've got all these traditional mattress stores and department stores that think that it's all about the product and it's not. And so the, the challenge is to bring them up to speed so that they realize that it's not, it's, it's a big fluffy, right, fluffy rectangle is what we call them. Like 
it's not rocket science, but it's that experience that's important, not the product. It's, and they've got it the other way around. So that's what's been interesting about um, kind of the changes. It's, it's, they've been going along for so long that the way they've always been doing it. So it's kind of refreshing and exciting that these startups have come along. It's a little scary as well, but it's, um, it's something that we as an industry probably needed. So, so just you know, building on that, you know, we, so Warby Parker, right? What did Warby Parker teach us? That all the frames are made in the same place and, and et cetera. So therefore, why are we paying the five or six X markup for the Chanel, the Dior, whatever it is. Uh, so is there, uh, in the mattress business, you know, is there one place in the sky where all these things are made and basically they're all the same and then the rest of it is packaging? Or, you know, is, it basic, is a mattress basically the same, whether it's an X thousand dollar or whatever, or there's meaningful differentiation in the actual core product? There are, they, they are for the most part, um, each of the companies makes their own. So there's not a single mattress manufacturer in the sky that makes all these mattresses. Um, and the components are, you know, they're springs. And so one might have, you know, a different looking spring than this one, but it's a spring. Uh, so they all will have their trademarks and their copyrights and make it seem like they've got something. But yeah, essentially they are all just springs with some kind of foam on top or else in the case of like um, the Caspers that are put in a box, then it's just a foam core with this. Uh, so they're essentially all the same, and that's the, again, the unfortunate disconnect in the store is they get all this product training so that they know all about the what's in there, and they don't translate that to the benefits. And again, that's what the customer's looking for. They want to know, if I buy this, what's it going to do for me? I'm, I'm going to sleep better? And what's that going to mean? I'm going to wake up tomorrow morning and not be stiff and sore, and I'm going to wake up refreshed and be ready to hit the day, and I'm going to perform better because of the sleep that I got on this mattress. That's the story that should be told, but instead we're focused on, well, it's got this many coils, and it's got this many inches of foam, and so that's... The other part of your question, does it, as you go up in price, you do get more um, in there, um, but it's still, it's, it's foam, and it's... it's mattress springs like there's no it's not rocket science so okay. yes sir. yes they were we designed them when we talk to our, our store owners, everything that we do with marketing, dr the intent is to drive them to the website, which we then hope translates into a, um, a store visit. We don't have anything to track the actual in-store visits and then the actual purchases thereafter. So if we can show that they clicked on an ad and made it to the website and had some kind of meaningful interaction there, we call that a win. Um, especially we do, um, offer, NetSertif has uh, phone call tracking. So those are definite wins. Like if somebody clicks an ad and then the, on the website the phone number changes so that if they call that particular number then they know that it came from the ad. Um, we, somebody called your store, I hope you sold them a mattress because they were reaching out to you. Um, what we have found in terms of what has worked well, uh, I would say search is still the number one driver because you know that those are the people that are specifically looking for your product at that time. Um, display is excellent for um, just top of mind awareness. And what we're finding with social is social media is less advertising. Um, and this is, again, our dealers don't understand this. They think that everything should be promotional on their Facebook feed. It's more about um, planting the seed. And so they don't realize that they're in the market for a mattress, but they see something in their Facebook feed that says, wouldn't you feel better if you slept well last night? Something like that. And they don't, that gets them start along the process. And then hopefully, you know, it might take a couple of weeks or months, but eventually they're going to realize it's time for them to buy a new mattress. And then they'll do the search, and then they'll see the display retargeting ads, and it all just builds on itself.
I wish I could. Because of how we're set up and they're all individ individually owned, we don't see those numbers kind of combined. From There are some, some of our retail stores that we work more closely with. Um, they've got more than one location. They might have five or six locations. And we're seeing that they have shifted more so um, if they devote maybe net 10% of their gross advertising or gross dollars to uh, advertising, they're now putting maybe 40% to digital, and the rest they're still, they don't, they really like those circulars. Um, <laughs> they, they're really, they don't want to give up on that and, and their TV ads. Um, but we're seeing that as they go from 30% to 40%, then they start to see the results, and we've got a few that are devoting 60, 70%. Um, Yes, and we've got one, one of our retailers has four stores in Grand Junction, Colorado, and I, I think he's at this point committed 70 or 80% of his advertising budget to digital, and um, last year he was able to open a, his fourth store, and he's looking for more. Like, he's one of our, he's one of our favorite owners. Like, he does what we think that they all should be doing, and we use him as a case study in our network and say, see, like, he's doing it, why can't you? So. Um, I do see that that is hopefully a direction they'll be taking. It's just a slow process. Uh, as a follow up, given uh, what, what should uh, you and I were starting a matching team in uh, 2018, would, would, would you advocate going the lightning speed route, or would, 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 would this thing, uh, uh, would this concept of the rolling out? Uh, so would I, do you mean would I have corporate, all corporate stores, or would I have individual localized? Stores, they, they would like the um, I do like the idea of having, so I like, the licensee model, while it's, it has its challenges, or the franchise, I mean, it's very similar to a franchise. Um, I wish we had some more influence right. on it. It's hard to be nimble. It is hard yeah. to be nimble, but at the same time, at least how we're structured now, in order to run a national chain of stores, that takes a lot of people, a lot of manpower. So from that end, it's we can have the ideas, and it's it's easier if they're running their markets. Um, so I, th I like that structure of it. It would just be nice if we could get them to do what we ask them to do. <laughs> yeah. You had a question? You had a question oh, before? Oh, oh, no? OK. So it's, it is interesting from a, a mattress store distribution. Uh, it used to be we had a, a, some, some big regional players. So we had Sleepy's uh, mattress firm was more uh, Texas area. We had Sleep Train on the West Coast. And it's just like all the other industries where the bigger becoming bigger and buying up these, these smaller ones. And it's really putting this, this is no news to anybody, it's putting the squeeze on all the independent small change. Of small chains, and you're seeing a lot of those go out of business because they just aren't adapting to the change. Um, but eventually, like there's people have talked about, will mattress firm like you? You are in some markets; they literally have a mattress store on every corner, like four stores competing with each other because they took over stores that had leases. And so I think we're going to see that number shrink as some of the leases um, expire. Uh, but Unless, unless the local mom and pop stores kind of catch up to the times, I think we'll continue to see them drop out and the big retailers that at least understand it or have the store capacity to continue doing what they've been doing, I think we'll keep seeing them um, grow. So, um, Margins are, at the end of the day, when you net everything out, 
and, and again, this is for, I don't know for uh, mattress firm size operations, so I'm talking one or two store uh, locations. You're maybe in the 10%, eight to 10% net margin. So. Final question I would add, uh, given the challenges of adoption, given third party distribution, whether it's franchise or licensee, what are some top tips you've learned to get adoption of new strategies that that corporate has spent money R&Ding, unveiling, and would love to introduce, but given those barriers of third party distribution, top three or four tips to, that folks can take away relative to adoption. So relative to adoption for like marketing strategies and things yeah. like that. So what we have found is first of all, uh, make it as easy as possible for them. So that's where we've, we've done what we can to uh, consolidate all those assets in one place. We, we a lot of times internally talk about we can lead the horse to water, we can't make it to drink. So we've got this trough and it's laid out and it's got lovely, beautiful water and we're hoping that it looks so appetizing that they will drink from it. So we bring the best programs we can to them and we make sure that it's as easy as possible for them to um, implement. Um, beyond that, um, I think the other thing that we, that we need are champions. So that grant the, the store owner or Grand Junction, when, they, when we find those partners that we can test something with and they can then do well with it and communicate that to the others, they're more likely to listen to their peers than they are from us. So that's what we have found um, when, we, when, we in, when we try to implement something new, if we can get a few of those uh, key accounts to implement it and talk about it, we start seeing more adoption. So I'd say those are the two things that we have found works the best. Great. So. As we wrap up, any final questions? Nicely done. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much.